Okay, so I'm here at Goffs with Goffs Group Chief Executive Henry Beebe. We're going to talk a bit about next week's Goffs London sale. So Henry, what can we look forward to? Well, you can look forward to lots of excitement, great potential. We've got 22 lots. Um, we're really excited. We're just releasing the final lots today. Uh, a really good select bunch, some top class prospects, some great breeding stock, and we're really looking forward to it. Any individual lots you can mention who are particularly Yeah, exciting? well, of the 22 lots, there are three mares. Um, so we might start with them. There are, there are three mares, all in fold of very good sires. Uh, there's the champion three-year-old filly in South Africa, a mare called Just Sensual, um, who's a Group 1 winner. She's in fold of Frankel, so that's very um, opportune to have her. Uh, we have a mare called Murasaki, who's a winning Dubarbi mare out of a Ribblesdale winner, who's in fold of Invincible Spirit. Uh, and then Sim Simmer, who's a half-sister to uh, Kevin Prendergast, runner up in the Derby in Mad Moon, yeah. uh, and she's in fault of Expert Eye. So those are the three breeding stock uh, who have sold very well. We've also had a couple, we've tried to have a couple of really good elite brood mares in the, in the few years that we've been holding the sale, uh, and these certainly fall into that category. We have 19 winners. We have 14 Royal Ascot entries and our 17 horses in training, four in the Queen Mary, four in the Windsor Castle, two Norfolk entries, one Albany entry, one Chesham Stakes entry for the two-year-olds. And then we have entries in uh, the Commonwealth Cup, uh, the Jersey and the King George V Stakes. So a really good bunch of horses and training. And I know you're always innovating, um, thinking of new things to do at the sale. Is there anything new to look forward to this year? Yeah, um, as you know, Irish Thoroughbred Marketing held their barrier trials at NACE recently. Um, so we're very grateful to both NACE and ITM for that innovation. Uh, and we have two of the winners of those barrier trials coming as well. Uh, there's Tina Haller, who was a good international prospect. He won on the 5th of June. Uh, and King Slayer, who also won that day. So that's the first time we've had those. It's a relatively new innovation here. And um, we're looking forward to those as well. But there are some very, very good horses in training to back them up. Um, with entries in some of the big races. There's some real chances. I mean, one of our most recent entries is the first American Pharaoh two-year-old to win in the States, Maven, trained by Wesley Ward. Uh, he has an entry in the Norfolk. Uh, there's Fozzy Stags from Heakin Heights, who goes for the Chesham, having won a really competitive maiden um, at Leopardstown. Daughter-in-law, who goes for the Queen Mary, was very impressive on, on Irish Guineas Day. Uh, made all to come up the middle and win at the Curra. So those are just a few of them. Then the slightly older horses, a three-year-old, La Don de V, uh, a very good horse trained by Andrew Balding. It looks a real prospect. So those are a few. I've probably missed the sale topper out, but um, there's a really good bunch. And we've kept it tight again. Only 22 lots. We've got about an hour and an hour a bit of selling yeah. uh, by the time we do it. It's a slightly different sort of approach, so we don't rush it. Um, and it'll be a great atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, and as long as it doesn't pour with rain, um, it should be a really good day. So to explain, this sale takes place on the eve of Royal Ascot yes. in Kensington in very salubrious surroundings. And you've said before, this is one golf sale where it's not all about hard profits and clearance rates and average prices. There's more to this sale to golfs, isn't there? Well, I think so, yeah. I mean, obviously, we exist to sell thoroughbred racehorses. So the central point, the starting point of the Goffs London sale uh, is to hold an auction and sell the horses. And that's what we do. But there are a lot of knock-on effects. When we got together with Kipco in the first year, who have been our major supporters, uh, Sheikh Fahad and his brothers at Kipco and David Revers uh, were very keen to be involved in something that bought um, a sale to the people and encouraged new, new racehorse ownership. So that's very much in our mind. So we work closely with Kipco, with our partners, um, and with GBRI to try and bring new people into, into business and into the business. And we've had a number of people have come to the sales in recent years since we started, um, made their first, some of their first entry into racehorse ownership full stop, uh, some into British, British racing. Um, and if people come to the sale and don't necessarily buy on this occasion, but they buy in the future, then that's partly done its job as well. So it's also for Goffs about a brand opportunity. As you say, we're in the grounds of Kensington Palace, on the eve of the greatest race meeting of the year, Royal Ascot, uh, in the heart of London. Um, the timing, uh, the location, uh, and the sort of general uh, overarching aims of the sale are, are what we're all about. Selling the best on the eve of the best in one of the best places. So that's very much what it's about for us. And then finally, all those horses who you're trying to entice to the Goffs London sale, we all know there's a very, very competitive private market for those horses. As soon as a good two-year-old crosses the line, the agents will be on that owner and the trainer. How easy or hard do you find it to attract horses for sale? And what do you say to an owner to try and convince them to go to auction rather than take the private offer? Well, you're quite right. I mean, we work in a very competitive environment. 
So we're not just competing with the other auction house. Um, we're competing with, you should say, the private market. What we would say is the Goffs London sale will bring together, your colleague James Thomas said last year, a who's who of international racing. We welcome people to the Goffs London sale on the eve of Royal Ascot that we dream about getting to come to a normal sale, to put it that way. Um, so what people have is an opportunity to sell people they didn't even know were interested, didn't even know existed. Uh, now that is probably the case with a lot of auctions, but this auction is, it is a sale like no other because it combines so many different facets to make it quite unique. One of the other unique factors is thanks to the British Horse Racing Authority, um, if somebody buys a, an a horse with an entry in one of the, one of the uh, Royal Meeting races, they can immediately transfer ownership and see the horse run in their own colour. So you could be buying on Monday evening at about five, quarter past five, six o'clock, and you could be standing in the parade ring with everybody from the international racing with your own colours walking around the next day. That's unique to the Goffs London sale. It doesn't happen anywhere else. It's thanks to the BHA, we should uh, point out. I mean, it's very easy to knock the BHA, and lots of people do, but on this particular thing, the BHA could not have been more helpful and encouraging, and we're very grateful to them, and HRI, who have linked in with the BHA on, the, on occasions. So um, it's a quite unique setup. So, of course, it's competitive. But what I would say to somebody who's been offered a horse, uh, offered a price privately when they might go to the sale is, there's a reason people don't try and buy the horse privately before the sale is, because they'll probably have to give more of the sale. Mm.